Well, there's one here that is turned off. There's another here that's turned off. Could that, that be part of the issue, do you think? Alright everybody, hello and welcome back to another episode on Rise of Industry with me, Spacefish, and welcome back to our beautiful, beautiful countryside production setup in Rise of Industry. We have, in the last episode, made some uh, very decent progress, I would say, on uh, yet another new production setup with uh, these paper mills that we now have going out here, making a good bunch of paper rolls that we then go and deliver out to WebAMs for some extra money. That's all been going quite nice and well and fine. The thing is that we're not quite done uh, yet, well, at least we're not that sure if we're done yet on the production, uh, well, on the logistics setup, given that I've not connected this uh, train line through intentionally, because I did want to see if only one connection between train stations would be enough for the train to operate, or if we would need to get two indeed. So that's something that we're checking out today. And also, there have been some problems manifesting themselves down below here in our toy factory. So that is something that we will have to urgently check out most definitely. And that is 100% on our list. And on top of that, Panowitz is also ready to expand. So that is going to be quite interesting. We are going to be able to choose which kind of shop we would like to spawn in the village. And, uh, well, then we can uh, either go for uh, delivering some materials, which we're not making any of these. So we are instead going to probably go and uh, just pay some money to get the city updated. So that's all very much in the line as well. And we'll be taking care of that and many, many other things. Uh, for today, though, before we get started, if you're new around here, if you happen to enjoy this episode, please make sure to smash the subscribe button right down below. That would mean the absolute world to me. Uh, 1,000 subscribers are not all that far out anymore after a long, long grind, and every single person truly does help out a ton. So thank you very much if you did that. Let's head right on. Now, another side topic that we had going on up here in the last episode was the contract auction uh, for delivering 12 leather to web arms. So that's something that we'll have to keep in mind that we will definitely try and get. I mean, we're making a good bunch of leather up here in our warehouse, and I would very much like to make some extra profit on that. So that's definitely on the list, too. And then on top of that, I mean, we technically still have that PR event going on. I do doubt that there's going to be much of any building of much of anything going on in the very near future, given that we're down to, like, 800 grand in budget left over. Now, we're going to make, of course, a good bunch more profit, because all the new productions have just been recently set up, and there's... Going to be a lot of goods just starting to flow that are generate, going to generate more and more profit for us, but that is still a good while out. Now, uh, before we go and head on to all these topics, though, and before we go and fast forward to see if the train's actually driving, I do definitely want to have a look at this stuff here first, because there's four toy factories now that are missing input, which I would argue is a good, good bit too many. In terms of the production itself, I really wonder why there's cotton here. I guess that may be because this factory was once a stuffing factory. It's the only real explanation for that one. Um, in general, though, even here, like every every toy factory down here seems to be wildly, wildly low on stuffing. So let's go and maybe find out where we're getting the stuffing from, if the frequencies are aligned and everything. It's going to be a whole lot of a search, to be honest, because, I mean, as you can see, we've got about two bajillion toy factories down here. So actually pinning down what all the ins and outs are is going to be quite interesting. Now... Right, this is... Okay, so this, this will make sense. Well, actually, does it make sense? Where are we making the rest of the stuffing? Is it down here in these toy factories? Well, there's one here that is turned off. There's another here that's turned off. Could that, that be part of the issue, do you think? Because that doesn't look right to me. It looks very wrong to me, in fact. 
Why are these turned off? I wish I would remember, because this is like two years ago that we took care of that. I mean, then we have got Toy Factory 9. Um, other than that, there should also be like a lot of auto connections. Toy Factory 11, apparently. 14 and 10. So these here, I guess. 14, 11, 10. And then we've got these. I found another one that's turned off. Wait, what? Where's 13? No. What? I'm confused. 10, 11, 14. Where's 12? 13, 12. And where's... And 14 is... Wait, no, I found 14 is turned off as well. There's three toy factories turned off right now. Right, so this is quite weird, I would say. I've got absolutely no explanation in the world in my mind why there would be uh, three stuffing factories just randomly turned off. Uh, to, to be honest, that's really, really worrying right now. Let's go and see. So is there any others that I have not opened yet currently? No, that, that seems to be all of the ones that we've got that set up to. Now, there is also the sellout to the toy store, which I'm con quite confused about, like, this line here, to be honest. Quite confused in general. Um, hmm. I guess that only really allocates anything. I, it, it's automatic, given that the toy store is in range of the warehouse. I guess that really all only allocates anything. If we do have some overhangs in there, I mean, we do have that separate connection, which I'm not sure how much sense. Maybe maybe we can actually turn that one off, to be honest. Because we do have the separate destination for the toy store set up here anyways. And that's kind of set to min kept, which is a lot more accurate to our needs in the end. So then in terms of the incomings, right, we've got 10, 11, 14... What about all the others? So we've got 14. Well, I mean... I guess... Well, the others, I guess, are out of range with the auto logistics. That's why they're not showing up. Then we've got... No. I'm so confused, everyone. Where do we have the... We don't even have destination set for these yet. Okay, that's quite worrying. Now the thing is that all of our bare factories, right, they are all in range of Warehouse 1. So I can't imagine, let's double check, but I can't imagine they're serviced by anything else here. In fact, it doesn't... I mean, the inputs and everything should show up and maybe not. Where are all my ingoing and outgoing things that I've assigned to that warehouse currently? I guess I don't see it in here. But I mean, we do have these things in there. Let's let's double check in the warehouse, I guess, what we do have in terms of outgoings. It should be in the auto logistics in the end. So we've got 16, 17, 15, and 18. The other toy factories in the range here, I think, are like toy furniture and all. Which is also something that we should maybe double check just in case later on, but... um. I don't want to just spend all of the episodes double triple checking all the mistakes we made previously so you know it's ideal if we don't make them to begin with but let's go and start looking through this here uh toy factory 1617 okay so just 15 through 18 we've got 16 15 18 17 so all these toy factories are being serviced by that warehouse now the question is right why in the world is this that low because it, it doesn't make sense to me that we would leave these off because even if we did have overhangs we would be able to sell that stuffing off to Panowitz so in the end there's no use in having that turned off what is kind of a point is that maybe we were not having enough cotton or something we maybe need some extra supplies there that's something to think about uh, one way or another we're making four units of stuffing every 15 days we are using 
uh, if if I maybe actually grab some sort of teddy bear factory, uh, we are using two every. Okay, so it makes sense, I guess, in the sense of like. The toy factories themselves, like two of them, should be able to cover four teddy bear factories. Now we've got three on top. Which I find three quite the weird choice. Because in the end, with like the on top stuffing that we could produce, we would be able to supply the toy store with like, well it's actually seven per 15 days. That we have here in terms of did I ever really pay attention? It's actually a bit of a mismatch as well, isn't it? Have we ever properly matched this? Well, anyways, I mean we. Uh, aha. See, this is something that I didn't know was a case in this game. Apparently, the mans don't really stay static. Which, given, you know, ever-changing demands in the real world and growing and shrinking cities, I, I guess it makes a lot of sense. As you can see, I mean, we've got four dolls per 15 days and three teddy bears per 15 days. I'm not really sure how it used to be, so that's actually something interesting. We'll see. As long as you don't have crazy overproduction, I think we can work with it. One way or another, we've got seven stuffing every 15 days. Which means that every bit of overhang that we have from these toy factories right here, we could easily, easily take care of. Now the question is, did we maybe not turn these on due to not having enough cotton coming in? That is an outgoing. I guess we don't see the ingoing here either, do we? Okay, now the question is, where do we pull the cotton from? I suppose it would be warehouse two. We've, we're literally just spamming ourselves with windows at this point, aren't we? This one, I guess, we can get rid of for now. Uh, this one, we don't really need either. So, warehouse two should be where we harvest all the cotton for that very production. Which we can see. Here. Plantation three. There's literally one plantation taking care of these things for us. So... Wherever Plantation 3 is, I would have thought there, is where we get our cotton from. Where is Plantation 3 at? Just, you know, asking for a friend. Oh, here. Yeah. Okay, cool. So this is where we get all of our cotton from. We are making in Plantation 3. Well, let's actually check that we're getting it from Warehouse 1. It's just been an assumption thus far, but it, it should be the way that it is. Uh... Cotton to Toy Factory 9. Oh, that's Warehouse 1. Don't mind me. I, I was getting very confused now. I was, let's, let's kind of pull things apart so we actually know what's what. So, um... Cotton goes to Warehouse 1. Exactly. So this, this is the one that supplies to Warehouse 1 in the very end. Got a lot of plantations up there. But, um... That means that we are... Two per field, so we're getting six units of cotton every 30 days. Now, these toy factories are using two each every 30 days. So we would have an overhang for one toy factory. We would not have enough for all three, which is interesting. I guess let us first start toggle one of them. And then we'll have to see what we want to do with the other two. Technically, we can easily... Make all the stuffing and actually make some money off it. The question is, what kind of capacities do we potentially have? Also, in kind of keeping in mind that we have got Warehouse 4 up here, where we should have a plantation, like Plantation 2 out here. And another plantation, like Plantation 4, that already made cotton. And then I'm not quite sure we put all the fields onto. This one right here, specifically, apparently, only having one field. Quite interesting, if you ask me. What do we have here currently in terms of cotton? I think, I guess that's fine. Um, if we were to add one field, we could technically already... S well, no. 
two fields, right? Two units every 30 days. So if we were to add two fields, we could technically also supply the other two toy factories. Which I think, I mean, from a profitability standpoint, it makes sense. We've got the demand. We've got the factory. I mean, we've literally got a factory standing there that would not get used for anything else otherwise. So we're going to do that. We're going to go out of field there. And I'm going to go out of field right there. And that is going to increase our production of the cotton. How in the world I minimize that panel? I don't know. That's apparently how. Now we've got extra cotton. The, the important thing here to keep in mind is that we need a lot of cotton for this doll production up here. We don't want to jeopardize it. So what we're going to do is we're going to go and, uh, well, first things first, pick out the cotton. We're going to choose a destination for it, which is going to be Warehouse 1, of course. That's where the cotton has to go in the end. We don't really have any alternative to street transport, unfortunately, which is going to make this whole section even more clogged than it already is. But we're definitely going to set the min kept to like 10. So that way we can ensure that we've hopefully got ample amounts for our doll production at all times. And everything that we have on top, we send to warehouse one and that warehouse can use it for the other two toy factories, which are going to make even more stuffing for us and that should hopefully be this very weird shortage taken care of i'm not quite sure what we did here i think like remembering to the best of my abilities this probably happened th during our first pr event when we just tried to save some money or well not save some money but like use the pr event to its fullest and we already pre-built some toy factories for the future that we didn't really technically have any use for now that should be solved we should be making a lot of extra stuffing, which doesn't matter because we can sell it off beautifully to the toy store. And um, we will definitely have more than enough stuffing for the toy factory. So hopefully that's fine. Hopefully that's stable. We, it, it's an interesting revelation, I have to say, that these demands actually uh, do change over time. So we certainly do have to come back every once in a while to actually check these out and maybe also just for these demands but um that is something for the future then good to know let's go and finally move on i hope that is going to fix itself quite soon and what we will now actually do we won the contract we will first things first win the contract without remembering that that was still going on <laughs> quite the lucky one if you ask me and we will go and uh, alter the destination. Or maybe we'll just add a new destination for the leather. Where's my contract? Where do I see how much time I have? Oh, here it is. Uh, we've got 360 days. I was considering to just replace one destination with the other but honestly for 360 days we've got more than enough time and in the end if it takes a bit longer it's fine the good thing about setting it up this way is that in the very end when we do kind of you know when we're finished with that contract we will still have a destination I will not again forget to actually set up that's destination again and like things will pile up and we'll have like 70 leather and then we're like oh we had a destination to set up we set it up and there's like 70 trucks spamming the streets instantly so you know that's something i think we want to avoid now there is uh, multiple issues still popping up the first one that comes to mind right here is the pathing alert for the warehouse so What I think this is, is us not having the train station, uh, well not the train station, the railway properly built. So uh, I mean we've, we've sped it up a bit, we haven't seen a train go, I think, oh wait you can actually have these, that is an option? I did not know, that's quite intriguing to be honest. That's actually really intriguing because that means that you can in fact, despite needing like the railways to be connected to both sides of the train hub that means i guess that you would be able to connect multiple warehouse to 
the same train hub regardless. You just kind of have to make the train lines intersect. I guess that works. Let me know if you know down below in the comments. would absolutely appreciate that. I hope that solves this pathing issue now and that it wasn't actually something different. But we'll, we'll find out in a minute. We have got the contract one. That is fine. We will get rid of that alert. And then we have got a missing input for the Toy Factory 17. Oh, well. That is still... For stuffing so that should uh, solve itself you can see that we've got stuffing everywhere else now so that should hopefully be quite good and then let's see about the rest i hope that one here um, normalizes itself in a minute too and jesus christ look at the amount of trucks we have there go the trains look at it it's beautiful and magnificent i love it all the goods are being moved absolutely beautiful and you can see they're actually going one way in one direction one and the other way in the other not on the other railway and there's actually multiple going at a time. I'm not sure how much a train can actually carry, but I guess it doesn't seem to be all too much in the very end. More missing input. That is, though, about the cotton. And we'll have to see. I hope that there is going to be more available for this purpose. Yeah, in fact, I mean, there's 19. There's 19 units of cotton in that one. How much have I set for the min kept? Toy factory. Turns out I haven't set anything for the minimum caps at all because I haven't set the destination at all. Quite the evident issue, isn't it? Have I set the output for this? I have not. See, you know, always good to try and pay a bit more attention than I do, I guess. <laughs> right, let's go and uh, try and fix that. So. I mean, four cotton, maybe, for a start. What have we set here? Max cent of eight, min kept to four. So we will just mirror that downwards, basically. Um, is that 12? Yeah, 12 and 13. So max cent. Let's try and start at one instead of 40. That would be a one hell of a clicking job. And we'll uh, do a min kept of four. Just like that. And we'll go and set another destination. Same deal. Two toy factory. Two toy factory 30, just like that. We'll do a max send of eight and the min kept of four. Beautiful. So that's the outgoing destination set up. Now, in return, I mean, we kind of also should probably set up the destinations for the toy factories to make sure that they're actually going to be delivering their goods. But that's beautiful. That is all the connections set up, and that should mean that those are actually spooling up too, and uh, delivering us our own beautiful, beautiful goods. And look at the amounts of money that we're making. I am absolutely over the moon with that. Jesus Christ, last month we made two million bucks selling products. That is admittedly probably also a bit due to us stockpiling a bit of the paper rolls, but, you know, I'm sure that that can kind of stay that way now though i am seeing a point that has got me a tad bit worried about the production to well, not the productability but the productiveness of our lumber yard right here that being the paper mills being like kind of killing too many trees with their pollution i hope that doesn't happen we'll have to closely monitor that maybe we'll need an air purifier here now because and we can't go and jeopardize our own lumberyard production efficiency in the end. That doesn't make too much sense for us. We we do need to make sure that the wood keeps rolling in there, right? Now, what I do want to do, in any case, is maybe plant a few more saplings around here. And, you know, just a few around here to make sure that the lumberyard actually stays at peak capacity, even when... If and when a few of these trees die. I hope it doesn't happen, of course, but who really knows. Now, in terms of these, in general, this lumberyard seems to be also working quite well, despite the trees being a bit sparse here and there. Overall, I guess we are pretty, pretty fine, which is a good, good sign indeed, and I am quite happy with that. So that is all the issues solved down here. We're making a good bit of money again. We we are still having the missing input alert, which, um, well, I guess is not being alleviated till cotton actually gets delivered, which just happened there like that. And all these factories are now beautifully uh, running away too. In general, 
While streets are crowded, I can't see the most terrible conge congestions ever. We're working on the contract. We are um, hopefully also going to... Oh, uh, God. Make some money with other topics. And now we have this. Which is going to be a difficult one. Because as far as I can tell, this is literally the last region in the region. Well, it's, it's the last region on the map that has not yet been scooped up by AI. And we're really running out of space and business potential up here in Panowitz. As hard as we're trying and as much as we're getting that upgrade uh, for the city going, I think we want some more business potential and a bit more space to expand into. The thing is that that is pretty freaking expensive, and we don't really have much money. So if we really want that, we will have to go and take out a loan for that, and really, really try our hardest to not go bankrupt just by getting a permit. Not a big fan. I was hoping for that to happen a bit later. So we'll have to find out about that, and I think we will find out in the next episode. Um, please leave me your thoughts down below if we should or should not go for that permit auction. Would uh, certainly be quite valued. I would love to hear your opinions on it. Um, in the end, I mean, it's going to be quite a hefty loan to actually uh, take out, and I'm not even sure that we can take that much of a loan out. Um, I suppose through taking out like two separate ones and maybe paying off another one that we are currently holding, we would somehow maybe be able to juggle the ball around a bit, but overall, it's not great. So, let's do that. Please let me know your opinions down below in the comments. We'd absolutely appreciate that. We're going to take care of the uh, permit auction in the next episode then, and uh, depending on if we uh, get that and how much it takes... Um, we will kind of determine how to move on from that, because in the end, I mean, upgrading Panowitz does take a bit of money too, and we are currently very short on that very commodity. So we'll see about all that and more in the next episode for today. I'm going to end it off right here. I hope you all very much enjoyed the episode. As usual, if you did, please make sure to smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm, and if you're new around here and haven't done so just yet, also please consider subscribing right down below, as well as hitting that bell icon in order to stay up to date on all the future upcoming episodes. But with all that out of the way, as usual everybody thank you so much for watching and I hope I will catch you in the next episode very very soon. Ciao.